Humility is acknowledging God openly, vocally, publicly, intentionally, continually. You are welcome to Believers Global TV. Like, subscribe, and share this message. I separated my angles of discussing pride in two. Number one, spiritual pride. Number two, the pride of life. Let me talk about this. They are the two aspects of pride that I see that have almost damaged the lives of people. Why am I teaching this? Out of love. Because this is the condition to access exaltation. You want to be exalted in this kingdom, there is a mystery that controls it. Let's look at spiritual pride. Spiritual pride. In the book of Revelation, the Bible, when John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, please look up. There were seven churches. Now, theologically speaking, those were, they were real churches like that, scattered across Asia Minor. And there were warnings that were given to those churches. But prophetically speaking, it was a message to the entire church. Is that true? And one of the churches, please turn with me to Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14. One of the churches is called the Laodicean church. The Laodicean church received an instruction that is applicable for our lives today and for everyone who wants to remain relevant in the program of God relevant in influence relevant and to consistently be exalted it says and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans right these things saith the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God uh-huh it says I know thy works so he's cautioning them now that thou art neither cold nor hot I would that thou wert cold or hot so then because thou art lukewarm and are neither cold nor hot I will spew thee out of my mouth 17 because thou sayest what made you cold this is the basis thou sayest I am rich and increase with goods I have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked this year you see is about the most painful rebuke of all the seven churches for the rest you will first commend them you have done this except this just work on this but when it came to the laodicean church there was no commendation it was the rod immediately thou sayest i am rich i am increased with goods who does this look like in the bible who made such a statement lucifer himself the laodicean syndrome is a luciferian syndrome i am rich he says increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched miserable poor blind and naked next verse we're reading to 19 i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mightest be rich and white raiment that thou mightest be cloth and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou may see 19 as many as i love wow can you see that there is a special love he had for the laodicean church that was why he didn't even have time to commend anything he just went straight to rebuke them and at the end he said i'm doing this because i love you as many as i love i rebuke and chasten he says be zealous therefore and repent luke chapter 18 from verse 11 jesus taught us a very powerful lesson to describe humility and pride three or four verses full of truth from the lips of the master himself ready please look up the pharisees stood and prayed thus jesus is giving um, a, a parable now to explain something and he spoke about two men one a pharisee one an ordinary person the pharisees stood and prayed thus with himself god i thank thee he said that i am not as the other men are this is a man praying now 
extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican, he's praying. Next verse. I fast twice in a week. Everybody say spiritual pride. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 14. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Jesus is teaching spiritual pride. Can I tell you this? I can tell you by experience, and I can tell you from scripture if God does not help you, spiritual growth and spiritual excellence can turn and tilt you to the other side of the pendulum and bring your destruction when you begin to access revelation and insight when god begins to prosper your spiritual work in ministry for instance when god begins to bless you with prophetic powers grace for signs and wonders i tell you <clears throat> pride if if god does not help you to create a system where you cry before him daily you will be surprised to see how pride will creep into you and destroy your life. This has destroyed many men of God, respectfully speaking. This has destroyed many great leaders. This has destroyed many great businessmen. Spiritual pride. Self-exaltation that comes on the strength of spiritual progress. And many times, you can grow in revelation, grow in power to the point that you are no longer patient with people when they start. All of us today who are serving the Lord, we did not start this way. God was patient with us step by step and he's still helping us today. Spiritual pride. The moment you feel you are the only one God is using, Apostle Joshua Selman, it is only in Koinonia God is blessing people. Apostle Joshua Selman, you know, while I was preparing this message, I had to put my head and rest and think and say, I laid hands on my own head and I said, Lord, show me mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. I have said this to you and I say it out of every sense of responsibility, truly without exaggeration. Now it's even more. I manage an average of say 800 plus text messages in a day and many of them are full of commendations and sometimes human beings are masters at massaging your ego they will construct a text that looks like this apostle of the most high god i have searched men of god around from america to europe to africa i've listened to many messages none comes close to you now let me tell you if you actually believe that thing let, i'm talking to myself now if i actually believe that thing i'm not only stupid but i'm under an attack as as funny and childish as what i'm saying is there are some of you who will believe it absolutely and go out of your way to create systems that reinforce those kinds of things. Many of us have gathered psychophants in our lives today because they have mastered us that this is what we want to hear. Even if you are entering the pit, you want people who gather around you. Once they can massage your ego, they have access to your life, access to your inner circle until you, they destroy you and they will turn back and show people that this is where he died. Listen to me. You've heard me say this. You know you are being transformed by the Holy Ghost when there is humility connected to your growth. The moment you begin to trade humility for revelation, you are in trouble. Now, this, I say this with every sense of love and respect. This is one of the greatest fear for my generation of ministers. You see it in Africa 
one of the biggest mistakes especially with the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in africa generally and world over is that the little that god has done and is doing with our lives is so garnished with a lot of pride it even damages the beautiful thing that is there that is not even much relative to what god wants to do are we together chances are that because of what god is doing in a ministry like this and how god continues to glorify himself we can go back and begin to destroy ourselves with that sense of pride how do you know you are walking in pride when you believe listen to me when you believe that there are certain things you are the only one who can do and the only one who can bring is the mistake of elijah Elijah came to God and said, God, every other person has deserted you. Every other person does not like you. I am the only one. That's a nonsense. What are you saying? There are 7,000 others. How many preachers today, we preachers, I don't say them, we preachers, how many of us preachers today actually sit down and believe that without us, God's purposes will fail? Look at that level of pride. There are people who stand and speak as if every other person has backslidden. Every other person does not love the Lord. We must be careful. There is destruction that we are programming. The one who built the church is still alive. And his jealousy will make sure he defends his work to the end. Can I tell you this? As a man of God, I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting people. And God many times opens my eyes and i'm able to see these people they themselves do not know how mighty they are in the spirit i shared with you a story one time that i was pre preaching at a pfn crusade in kano and i was calling people out by word of knowledge ministering to people you know people were watching with wonder the anointing and all kinds of things and then i called this woman out and when the woman came out she was an intercessor and then she told me that every 15 days she finishes her bible a house her bible 15 days without fail and yet they are not on air yet they are not the joshua selmans who sit in front and yet we can have the audacity to believe that we are the only ones god is using not so my brothers god has a mighty army some of them mighty and greater than the joshua selmans you celebrate nobody knows them yet some of them are hiding in the school of the spirit god is using our own life to teach them lessons and train them we must have the maturity the wisdom and the spirituality to know this are you learning something tonight yes spiritual pride people bully one another across the body of christ today with rema revelation many people this is what led them into divination and some of these things now pray from prayer groups you go to different campuses now you see things that make you afraid everybody's trying to search for anything once there is greek hebrew and latin and you conjoin then the spiritual pride that comes from account of prayer prowess once i can pray two hours three hours four hours you can bully others to make it look you are not spiritual <sighs> then crowd once you have crowd inside and outside we are the only ones god is using brothers and sisters it is not true it is an attack from the pit of hell there is such a thing as spiritual pride the more you see the glory of god can i tell you this the more you are exposed to god i'm telling you the more you see your inadequacy before him and the need to remain humble many times when i enter and i come to sit and i watch people looking at me in my mind i'm just saying oh god someone was at a pastor's conference it's a story that i heard years ago they were at a pastor's conference ministers were praying and our father in the lord baba deboe was there and when it was time to pray mass prayer everybody was praying and then the man had the opportunity to lie down not too far as he said from Baba Deboe and pastors were praying Lord the grace on this ministry it must come upon my life I'm tired of 300 members I'm tired of that's power and when he came close for more than one hour or so he said all that Baba Deboe was saying is mercy oh God 
mercy oh god mercy oh god that's how you know people who have grown others who just came lord fire lord bring partners now why do i have this quality of sheep bring people who can help me and and change this and stop this work from being hard someone else is crying and say lord mercy keep me to the end mercy the humility it takes to finish can i tell you this it is a caution that god gave me and i continue to obtain grace from god to stand in partnership with the holy spirit that as he opens new graces and new vistas of spiritual reality that we are patient with people today many people come who are just starting ministry and they come apostle and sometimes they almost want to worship you can i tell you this spiritual pride works in two angles there is the one you create the people who praise you by yourself you praise yourself but there, there are others you will not create it but when you see it you will sap that you will enjoy it like squeezing an orange until there is nothing left. it's still pride there are times that you have to go out of your way to thank them and say thank you for this but please be careful there are things people want to do in my life today if i'm to allow people to do everything they want to do in my life it will almost become another religion people will now almost worship joshua selman ah may i not live to see that day oh. in the name of jesus christ looking at me now and following online many of you the devil is already programming this spiritual pride that's what has driven many people to go on 40 days dry 10 days dry you ask them why they tell you no we started ministry with these guys to, i can't remain like this and you think it's a very nice motivation no i can't be some of you are listening to me some of you that's what even brought you here and god is looking at the corruption in your heart there's nothing wrong with prayer and fasting don't get me wrong but that that motif is already dead it's already gone spiritual pride why do you think people go to dapple into all sorts of demonic things it is because people are looking for a name spiritual pride take it down for me let me sing that scene that song the more i know you the more i want to know you jesus more of you the more i know you the more i want to know you jesus more of you the more i see you the more i want to see you jesus more of you listen historically speaking do you know and i say this with every sense of respect one of god's generals i may not mention his name because i'm speaking to a global audience but one of these generals that was one of the things that brought him down he was a mighty general of god used of god powerfully but he got to a point where people told him you are one of these prophets elijah specifically and when they said that for a while he said no 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 our glory be to god i don't mean the spirit of elijah elijah incarnate you are that elijah that revelation say would come again can i tell you this in the state of pride there is nothing you will not believe that's why it's good to ask god for mercy I want more of you I want more of you Jesus the more I know you the more I want to know you Jesus more of you listen and eventually they now made him believe that he was Elijah and after a while he started believing it and he went and saw the regalia 
at that time there was no social media so you would not really know what God was doing at the other side of the world it was at that time that the woman that we call Maria Woodward Eater God now lifted her and when that man heard that God was using someone outside of him he persecuted that woman seriously number one that she was a woman number two who are you for God to use you I'm the only one that God is using here and thank God he served God but he did not finish well the things that are written are for time they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture some of these people have allowed their scars to be seen not to condemn them we honor them in life and even in death for the contribution that they brought but there are lessons for us to learn there is nobody destroyed who stands with the potential of destruction keep going as god is lifting you spiritually apostle joshua selman you know sometimes i watch with shock and wonder it's almost it's even embarrassing as i'm saying it now please forgive me but i mean people can give you this godlike i know it's a sincere way to honor you there's nothing wrong with that except that sometimes people can give you all this description and all this spiritual paraphernalia and if you are not careful you will fall into it with joy joshua selman i can stand now and begin to pray and the power of god moves in this place and people are blessed spiritual pride on account of the progress you are making in the spirit on account of the fact that god it has so pleased him by his sheer mercy and grace to lift you to a position where you now represent the voice of god to a generation I warn myself every day God can do without you God can do without you mr. man you are a man you are only of God Lord if you're lifting someone in this city don't do it without me don't do it without me Lord, if you're healing someone in this city, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're changing someone in this city, don't do it without me. I submit to you by God there are many men of God there are many people who need a retreat fast to go back and break down before God and say my maker and my king everything I ever have it came from you and thank God for the spirit of revelation thank God for the ability to minister healing thank God for the nations who are hearing what we are doing but Lord, I pray the pride that comes based on spiritual achievements, may it never, never, never. While you are saying it, you will look like a fool, but you are already signing your relevance for the next move of God. See, this is why you see a lot of people used by God, and then a time comes, you see another move of God. They are still alive, and yet you see, this is not backsliding. It just looks like God says, no, no, no. I can't make you do with this again. Some of you here are leaders over small prayer groups. You are already copying all kinds of nonsense. It doesn't matter even if it's from me. We have to be careful the things we are learning. Pride that destroys people it is as a result of this pride that dishonor has crept into the body everybody is correcting everybody someone who has not even started ministry standing at the back of the tree and calling fathers and insulting everybody spiritual pride till today when i have the honor and the privilege of meeting any of our fathers in the faith or anyone who has gone ahead it does not matter what they are saying i sit down quietly 
as if I do not know anything in ministry. I submit to you, brothers and sisters and people of God, the man talking to you is not stupid. By the grace of God, forgive me if I sound arrogant. I have seen honor. I have seen the grace of God. I have seen Jesus. I have stood before kings. I know what it means to have spiritual progress. God has helped me. But the way up is to remain on your knees. Many of you are simple. You are not humble. Simplicity is not humility. Humility is not refusing to acknowledge what God has done in your life. No. No. I remember one time years ago when I finished that preaching, someone sent me a text and said, I've been calling you and you did not pick. I said, look, they said I'm humble, not stupid. Do you know my activities? Don't, don't let people blackmail you emotionally just because you said you are humble. No. But can I tell you the truth? My brothers and my sisters, please listen to me. Pride based on spiritual achievement. God forbid, but if I die today, I sleep and I do not wake up. It will not change what God is doing on earth. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Never get to a point in your life where you believe God cannot do without you. And he says, really? No. It is a privilege beyond imagination to be part of God's program it is a privilege to help build and bless people it is a privilege to be granted the gift of influence and access it is it is a privilege there are many things today that I know from this scripture I did not study it is the spirit of revelation that brought it I cannot take credit for it there are things I've, I told you I have seen people who have fasted and prayed more than me years ago a gentleman most times when people are fasting sometimes i join them and round it up with them there was a gentleman who fasted for 400 days six to six i rounded up the 400 day with him and yet that person did not carry any power more than the spiritual activities we are doing believe me it is the mercy of god I know people who have studied more books about church growth than me. I know people who have gone to different theological seminaries. I know people who have had the opportunity. They have... <sighs> so the little and the bits that God does in and through our lives, as we ascend this mountain spiritually, may we ever remain humble. And I'm saying this to those who are also leaders in this ministry or leaders all around. We have to learn this. Men can clap for you. That is important. But you must get to a point where you say, this is enough. My life is to see Jesus glorified. Because you see, there's something the anointing and the glory of God does upon a man. It makes it look like you are not human again. And when people stand in awe, of that glory that majesty the wisdom that comes from god many times they begin to look for sincere ways of expressing honor and appreciation to you you are the one who needs to be wise to know when it has gone beyond honor into something else and to lovingly draw that line and keep that line drawn are we together everybody say spiritual pride please shout it say spiritual pride god is speaking to us right now there are people who have not been patient with younger ministers as they rise because of pride. I've told you this. When you are mentoring and raising people, part of the responsibility of fatherhood is that you must be able to take a lot of nonsense from people as they are growing. You must know and be patient with people the same way God was patient with us. Spiritual pride. Revelation. Rema, healing, prophecy, Africa. I speak to you by the voice of the Spirit. Men and women of God across this nation and across this continent, may we obtain grace from God to be humble. Some of these godlike things we continue to do 
we need to pray that God will have mercy on us. Otherwise, we'll keep falling like rain one by one at the instance of pride. Pride based on revelation, pride based on oratory, pride based on prophetic prowess, pride based on the miraculous, pride based on wisdom, pride based on all of these things, anything spiritual. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city, the watchmen watch it but in vain. It is vain to wake up early and to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. So you want to keep growing spiritually? You want to keep accessing supernatural levels of power? Let every lifting that God brings in your life culminate to a greater level of humility lord i am so honored that you have granted me this access sometimes when i'm sitting before the lord in the night and some of these revelations come tears just come out of my eyes and i say lord thank you thank you thank you you have been merciful to me and i'm grateful jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh excess love, oh. Spiritual pride. The second area of pride is God helping us. Hmm. Tonight's message is hard, but just receive it with love. It is, it is the way we make. The maker is making men. The second aspect of pride is called the pride of life. Please write it down. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16. What is the pride of life? The pride of life is the self-exaltation. You see, that, that, on, that inordinate feeling of importance, that, that, that not confidence, self-exaltation based on obvious achievements, the pride of life is for people who have achieved something tangible. If you have not achieved anything, you can have pride, but not the pride of life. The pride of life is the self-glorification that is derived in the presence of obvious achievements. You have results to show for it. 1 John 2, 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world the pride of life jeremiah chapter 9 from verse 23 to 24 the prophet speaking by the spirit admonishes us thus saith the lord let not the wise man glory in his wisdom it does not mean to not celebrate your wisdom uh-uh you know what pride is? The refusal to acknowledge God as the basis for your success. The refusal, the ashamedness, the moment you are embarrassed to let people see Jesus as the basis for your victory. You want to so enjoy that spotlight. You don't want God to interrupt this spotlight. Lord, I've waited all my life to shine. And now that the spotlight is on me, Jesus, get out of the way. Let me not have any interruption. Let me enjoy and savor the moment. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man uh -huh, glory in his riches. What is the pride of the believer? 24. But let him that glory yet glory in this. That he understandeth and knoweth me that i am the lord which exercise loving kindness judgment righteousness in the earth for in these things i delight saith the lord everyone say the pride of life this is where all other groups now come in politicians successful people businessmen god intends to lift us but we must be careful our world has a very superior architecture they can design a house where you will die when you rise 
they will design it psychologically they will call you names they will flatter you they will create all kinds of things and many of us subconsciously we may not know I've arrived we call it I don't know what the, I've arrived that's the one I know are we together yes I've arrived in ministry I've arrived in politics I have some millions or some billions in my account you know what made the rich man foolish read the Bible it was not his money the problem was not the rich the problem was the fool you know what made him foolish he built his bands and stored the things there and he said my soul find rest find rest not in God find rest in that money and God said today your soul is required of you my father used to tell us many years ago that no matter who you are no matter where you go to make sure you fight pride I think it's one of the most most outspoken virtue that he pounded in our heads growing pride May God bless him for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Pride. My power and my might. I am this. I made this happen. You hear people make all kinds of statements. I've taught you that everything comes from God through men. Pride is when men want to become the source of everything. I can lift you. I can do this. I can frustrate you. Ah. We have to be careful there is a god that sits in heaven the monarch of the universe so whilst you achieve all that you achieve using these keys that we keep sharing as god lifts you as god blesses you as god as god honors you make sure that you unashamedly stand before god and before men and tell them the Lord is the doer of these things you hear the testimonies week in week out all of the mighty and marvelous things if God has done anything good in and through this life and in and through this ministry and in and through any life here he deserves the glory so when men clap for you appreciate them but be sure to point them to the one who is the doer of every good thing and God says you had a chance to stand and savour this moment and you are directing people to me you are ready for the next level let's go and he will lift you fearfully help those under the anointing there please fearfully to another level this is one of the secrets and one of the graces that I prayed for and I continue to pray for Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 11 Deuteronomy chapter 8 remember he gave them a warning Koinonia is, is the Lord speaking to you tonight he gave a warning beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I commanded this day next verse less when thou hast eaten and are full you see something happens to people when they are not hungry again hunger is not the best but it has a way of making you to remember your maker. Is that true? When you are trekking, it's easy to pray in tongues while you are trekking. When you don't have a job, you have something to wake up in the night and pray for. In the name of Jesus, this spirit, you fought my father minus me. You can pray till morning. When you are trusting God for some breakthrough. But when this happens, there is something about men being full. Remember the five, five, the five loaves and two fish? They were hungry and they listened. What happened when they were full? They threw everything and went away. There's no record in the Bible of them telling Jesus, thank you. They left. He said, no problem, leave them. Gather my crumbs for me. Twelve baskets. The same people who were once hungry. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, one level, and hast built houses and dwell therein, next verse and when your herds and flocks multiply and thy silver and gold is multiplied you see the keyword there multiplied multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied then thy heart shall be lifted up that's the Bible's definition of pride when your heart is lifted up no longer your hands again 
it used to be your hands lifted up but when you become proud your heart is lifted up and thou forget the lord thy god which brought thee forth out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage uh-huh who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought and where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint 16 who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not that he may humble thee that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end 17 and thou say in thy heart the classic definition of pride the pride of life my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this world my connection is what gave me this electoral victory my business connection i am such an astute businessman you will tell yourself i am such a great preacher i am let it not be that when this has happened and men continue to clap for you you say my power and my might pride therefore is the refusal to acknowledge god before men as the doer of every good thing in your life either directly or indirectly what are the symptoms of pride an unusual passion an unusual passion for the attention of men an unusual passion for self-glorification a desire for men to keep singing your praises the obsession to hear men sing your praises or to sing it to yourself is pride that th there is such a craving for attention once the spotlight is not on you there is trouble is pride please pay attention to what i'm saying symptoms of pride the moment there is an ungodly and unusual craving for the spotlight to be the person there it doesn't matter what else let the light the darkness be on everybody but once it is on me that's it maybe i just described someone here maybe you are outside following online from whatever nation and the lord is saying this is you don't fight what he's saying the goal of God's word is to purify the washing of the water by the word the craving there are people who go out of their way to make sure that they ring bells to make sure everybody knows what is they are doing you buy a new shoe the whole world must know you bought a new shoe is that true you bought a new bible they must first see how the old one was very old then they see the new one to show you are spiritual some of these things are unnecessary please hear me it's a hard teaching tonight but it's the holy ghost speaking to you symptoms of pride what is the symptom of pride embarrassment listen the moment you begin to become embarrassed to acknowledge god publicly is a symptom of pride before God lifted you, you could kneel down and lie down and roll on the floor. But right now, you, are, you make sure you are calculated. I, I can't let this my, this my expensive cloth on the ground. Even God knows that it's not cheap. The ones that I bought it, the amount that I know he saw me roll on the ground with that one. And God says, this is for me. The 24 elders take up their golden crown not not rubber crown not metallic crown golden crown they drop it on the ground and they say holy 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 that's what keeps them as elders so the day they stop doing that they are no longer elders that's what keeps them as elders holy to him who sits on the throne they don't worship everybody in heaven the one to be worshipped is clear to him who sits on the throne the pride of life 
nothing wrong with getting all the good things can you stand in front of your mansion and roll on the ground before God and say Lord you are the doer of this let men devils and angels know that if it had not been the Lord by my side now may Israel say God is increasing you in ministry and you stand before men I'm not talking of shake sh uh, faking and carrying a form of pride whereas a humility and your heart is proud no that you can sincerely you see people can discern the purity of what you are doing you can stand here and be saying oh god you are the doer and people know that it's just talk in your heart you are saying i'm the doer there is absolutely nothing that you see happening in this house by the grace of god that would not happen if i'm not here it's a privilege to receive and to spearhead what god is doing it's a revelation we must have some of us money has brought a lot of pride there's nothing wrong with having money but many times pride money I have millions I have estates thank God congratulations we appreciate and respect you for paying that price to have this but can I tell you 10 minutes without breathing and all that thing it is wicked people who will fight over it while you are gone. Listen, realize the brevity of life outside of the help of God. It is, it is when you wake up in the morning you can think of doing real estate. It is when you wake up in the morning you can think of preaching. If he did not wake me this morning, there will be no rema, there will be no revelation, there will be no koinonia. So you can say thank you Jesus before men and they say why are you falling our hand we know that you are an intelligent person you are a professor par excellence and you say the fact that my brain is working I don't make the brain work I only read through a brain that is working the one who made the brain work is the one who deserves the glory can I tell you this many of us i'm sharing with you a secret that's why you found out that you stopped rising a long time ago go back to that place where you started with god roll on the floor and say jesus you are the one who i repent forgive me for the foolishness of forgetting about you i started thinking about my titles every time i see anything good whether it's a text whether whatever it is that people do I just stand before him and I say Lord you know you see my heart I never had plans for anything if you never blessed me if you never gave me ministry I am still grateful but that you have done this I return back I'm telling you sincerely and I'm only saying this because I'm teaching on this I return back every time from the miracle service or from any service once I'm done and all things are done I get down on my knees and I say father you have done it again thank you thank you thank you thank you while i'm saying it text messages are coming from all over the world mighty man of god i say lord that is dedicated to you they are just trying to say you are great what they are trying to say is galatians 1 24 and they glorified god in me but lord i'm like a host as that glory is passing may no devil trap it and kill me down there mm -mm. let it pass and go to him who is due all the glory all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh please help those under the anointing all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. One more time. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hear me. No matter who you are. And no matter what God gives you, if you are flying a private jet, you are not the wind that is holding the jet. You only had money to buy it from a man who manufactured it. I'm not being sarcastic, I'm only challenging you. If you win an election 
as you sit down on that seat while people are clapping just tell them thank you excuse them out lock the door of your office and roll on the ground say lord i knew that i would have lost this election you are the doer and god says because you have done this i vow that you will remain here and anybody that tries to fight you i will scatter them into pieces god helps you as a man of god every sunday you come if you see one member that comes to share what god has to say give god thanks oh if i come here and i find 10 people i will preach with the same fire and the same passion i stand before the god who called me and i'm telling you this it's not about the crowd no it is an honor to talk to one person about jesus to make an altar call and to be in partnership with the holy ghost to save lives listen to me the car you have in your house came by his mercy the house you have came by his mercy i have houses in europe i have houses in america congratulations there are people who have houses but they are mad today their brains are not coordinated again to even travel there as the, the houses they have everywhere their prayer is for survival lord let me leave can i tell you this the most dangerous thing about pride is not that you will be fought the most dangerous thing about pride is who will fight you the bible says god resisteth if men fight you you can go to god and say my father and my maker men are disturbing me if demons fight you you can go to god and say this three months again you can use his name if god fights you will you use his name to cast him the name of the lord is the highest and if the one the owner of the name is fighting you every other altar will join him to fight you too can i tell you this let me tell you how you know god is fighting a man everything fights him too you when everything is fighting you i care it for me the hand of god is there resisting you everything favor will fight you good things will fight you prophecy will fight you it is dangerous for god to be against a man Lord, you gave me this beauty. I'm a beautiful woman, beautiful lady. And God says, nonsense. If you die, your beauty will not resurrect you. You acknowledge him. Lord, I am a great man. It's because I'm intelligent. That's why companies are calling on me. And God says, nonsense. Ah. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of the Lord that showeth mercy i share with you a secret is one of the graces at work in this house sometimes we see people say apostle you are humble you are simple and i say my humility it didn't come from my background just like that it's a revelation i am aware that god can fight a man it is dangerous to be at the other side of that battle rewards of humility we're about to pray please sit down and write this down rewards of humility hmm. proverbs chapter 22 and verse 4 please never forget this scripture can we read it together proverbs 22 and verse 4 are you ready one to read by humility and the fear of the lord are riches and honor and life one more time by humility and the fear of the lord are riches and honor are you seeing that riches is not the same as honor you can have riches and not have honor you can have riches and honor and not have life there is a relationship between untimely death and pride there is a relationship between humility and longevity James chapter 4 from verse 6 then we go to verse 10 James 4 but he giveth more grace one of the blessings there wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud 
but give it grace unto the humble please go to verse 10 humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord koinonia and he shall lift you up that's where the secret is koinonia humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up Apostle Joshua Selman humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up man of God businessman politician whoever and wherever humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and there is a reward for it he will lift you so when you see a people who you never see their end they have mastered this ladder this lift called humility what is humility it is not denying what God has done in your life it is not denying the blessings and the achievement that is not humility humility is acknowledging God openly vocally publicly intentionally continually as the basis that when it's all said and done more than your intellect more than your business acumen more than your political connections more than anointing is the doer the doer of every good thing that's humility so you can stand before your estates you can stand before all of your credentials and all, all of that you can stand before the prosperity the bank accounts carrying the billions world over wonderful they are only profitable when you stand and say lord it is not unto these things but unto you I have you been blessed by this message if you have been blessed by this message drop it in the comment section Thank you for staying to the end of this message. I know you have been blessed. It is because of you that we are here. Thank you so much. Please, if you have not liked this message, please click on the like button and share with others. You know, we have listened to the message. And it is not about hearing alone. It is not about listening alone, but when we listen to the word of God like this, when we hear the word of God like this, the most important part is to meditate upon it and then pray and ask God to give us the grace to do, right? Not We are not to be hearers alone, but also doers of the word of God, right? It is at the point of application that the profit of the word of God now become manifest in our lives, right? So I encourage you to pray over this um, message and ask God to give you the grace because this message is a very, very powerful message because the world that we live in now Satan has blinded the eyes of people in such a way that what people are looking after in life is the pride of life. They want to exalt themselves above God. People don't care what, and they don't care about God again, right? People are after their belly, they are after their lust, their passion, they are after their lust, right? And this is what this is the thing that gives birth to the kind of things that are happening in our community this in, in this generation right this is what is making the community to become a kind of thing that is is, is becoming unbearable for people to live right because the love of god is not in the heart of men because the, the spirit of humility is not in the heart of men, right? When an, anybody that is truly humble, that truly fears God, he will live his or her life in such a way that it pleases God. And when you want to please God, it will be impossible for you to hurt your fellow human being, right? So, we ask for the grace to do according to the word of the Lord that we have heard. And yeah, that is it basically. God will help us.
God will strengthen us. God will provide for us. The hand of the Lord will be mighty upon us. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance over you and give peace. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. No even formed against you shall prosper. You go from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from strength to strength, even by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed in the country, you are blessed in the city, you are blessed anywhere you go. Your life is a reflection, reflection of the glory of God. Your life is a reflection of the power and the grace of God. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.